Hey guys, Lee here again with Tooth of the Arrow Broadheads. Today we are going to start part one of a two-part series for my entire arrow build for 2023. So this part one video is going to be entirely about spine matching. Um, basically spine matching is the process of uh, build, getting an arrow design planned out that will be mathematically perfect for your bow. So the way we do this is using an online software. There's a bunch of them out there. I use Archer's Advantage. It's, I believe, a $9 or $10 subscription for the year, and it's 100% worth it. Uh, we aren't affiliated with them in any way. They have no idea we're even doing this video. I'm just a really big fan of the, uh, of the system, so that's what we use. Um, but basically, the process of spine matching goes like this. Um, normally, you'd go into an archery shop and say, I need new arrows, and they'll say, okay, what's your draw weight? They might measure your draw length or measure your arrow length. They're gonna look at a spine chart and say, okay, you need 300 spine, cut them for you, send you on your way. Now, that is nowhere near accurate enough, in my opinion. Um, and there, there's mathematically, there's no way it could be because every bow has an exact amount of energy that it outputs. And every arrow has an exact amount of energy that it is designed to take. Now, you can think of it like a bell curve. Your arrow will fly well within a certain range of the bell curve, but there's one point where your bow's energy and your arrow's um, ability to take energy match perfectly, and that's what spine matching does. We are going to find that point using Archer's Advantage. So without further ado, um, let's get into it. First thing we're gonna do, get into the online software portion. Now, to start with on Archer's Advantage, the it's going to automatically bring you to this setup tab <clears throat> so first you'll click add setup um, type in your bow name whatever you want um, just to identify this build and you can save on arches advantage you can save um, as many as you want you can see like i even have my old setup from 2018 in here um, so the first thing will be to put in your current arrows information. It's really important that you put in your current arrow and not the one you're trying to build. That will come later. Um, that's necessary so that Archer's Advantage can calibrate exactly um, what your bow does with your arrow. How it performs will be a, uh, in real life. We're gonna put that information in here and that will be a calibration for Archer's Advantage to build you the perfect arrow. So. What I shot last year, the Killin' Sticks microventilator, um, you can see they got, they got every arrow brand in here. Pick your shaft model. I shot a 300 spine. Now your arrow length, that's a carbon to carbon measurement. That does not in include your knock. That does not include your insert or outsert. So get that measurement as accurate as you can, um, carbon to carbon. Don't worry about any of this. That's automatically calculated. Um, point details. So this is your broadhead or your field point weight point adapter that's just a fancy word for insert or outsert if you don't know look it up on your arrow manufacturer's website uh, find your arrow and you should be able to find the um, corresponding insert that came with it or if you used an aftermarket um, insert or outsert you should already know <clears throat> um, knock details easiest way to figure this out is to just pull one off and weigh it um, this should uh, auto populate fairly accurately but I always just pop one off and weigh it if you have a knock adapter make sure you weigh that too every grain will matter here fletch details if you shoot four fletch like me make sure you add that fourth fletch because at six grains per vein that's uh, that adds up right so add that fourth fletch um, again they have every I've never even heard of half of these vein manufacturers, so I'm sure yours will be in here. Your fletch model, um, fletch size and uh, weight per fletch and fletch length will auto-populate. Arrow wrap, same thing. I always just put in generic. I know I shoot a four inch wrap. If you shoot a reflective wrap, those are a little bit heavier and I believe there's a yeah glow wrap there. You'll be able to find that, but again, if you don't know, just take a wrap, uh, peel it off the sticker and put it upside down on your scale and weigh it. Um, every grain will matter here. So once you get all that inputted, then we're gonna skip sight configuration. You don't need that for now um, and go to bow configuration. <clears throat> so you'll select bow from the list. I shoot the Bowtech uh, Realm SR6. Don't worry about the limbs, cams or model year. There, it always just says all. 
to transfer data to current setup. So now what it's done is it's going to pop you back to the bow details tab here and it's going to estimate based on the arrow that you just inputted and the information that the program has about your bow, the Bowtech Realm SR6 in my case, it's going to predict a current arrow speed based again on your peak weight and your draw length, which you need to input. So for peak weight, I recommend just go on Amazon, buy a, buy a luggage scale with a peak weight setting. Just type in uh, archery draw weight scale and I think 20, 25 bucks, you can get a pretty good one. Um, and then you can measure your draw weight at home. This is uh, five draws and I average out my draw weight over five draws because it's never quite exactly the same when you draw it uh, time after time. Draw length. If you don't know this, go to an archery shop. They should have a draw board for you. Um, it's not something you can estimate. It's completely different than uh, arrow length. This needs to be measured using a draw board. Um, you can build a draw board for about 25 bucks. I built one. It's just as accurate as anyone you could buy commercially. Um, if you're interested in that, let me know. I can make another video on, on that too. Um, also, building a draw board allows you to do your own cam timing at home. So if you're getting into the, the home bow tech stuff, it's an absolute must. So putting your peak weight and your draw length, it's gonna estimate an arrow speed for you. I find this is usually not accurate. Um, it's close, but not accurate. And you'll see here, for optimum shaft selection results, calibrate using your current arrow speed. So this is absolutely crucial. This system will not work perfectly. It will not spine match perfectly unless you put in your actual arrow speed. And the reason for that is Archer's Advantage will take the arrow you just inputted, your bow and your current arrow speed and say, okay, with this arrow build, your bow performs like this. And that is its main calibration metric for making um, your shaft selection uh, in the future and designing your next arrow. So once you do that, this system works flawlessly. I took, I shot mine through a chronograph um, and I got 266 feet per second. So if you don't have a chronograph, go to a pro shop, call ahead. They should have one that you can use, most do. If Again, if you're getting into the home shop stuff, buy a chronograph. That's a great tool for archery and rifles. Um, so once you input all of that, then you're good to go. Now we're going to go to shaft selector. Shaft selector is going to spit out your old arrow and tell you how it performed. So if you've never um, spine mashed before, it's likely going to be weak or stiff. This side is stiff, this side is weak. Um, and the idea behind spine matching now is we are going to play with all of these variables to get an arrow um, that is optimum spine where this bar is in the middle um, so basically slightly weak this is what it's showing for me right now um, this is it's showing that my arrow is slightly weak that means that my bow is outputting a little bit too much energy for the arrow uh, that I'm shooting out of it right now and it's not uh, it's not working in that bell curve it's not going to fly optimally. The reason for that is because this year I shot 63 pounds. So you can see when I move this to 63 pounds, we're in that optimum spine range. I lowered the amount of energy that my bow is outputting to match the amount of energy that my arrow is designed to take. So let's get into building my new arrow. Um, there's a few things I'm willing to, to move around. There's a few things I'm not willing to change. Um, I'm shooting a killing sticks again this year this year I'm moving to the microventilator LT I know I'm shooting a 300 spine um, changing the spine that moves this bar drastically um, like when you if your spine is wrong there's nothing you will be able to do in terms of changing your shaft length or your point weight or anything to bring that bar into the optimum spine zone you need to have the proper spine um, in the first place and the way you can tell that is just by looking at your manufacturer's spine chart um, like they would at the at the bow shop, but again, that's just a starting point. That is not the full uh, scale of what we're about to do here. So using that, I find that I'm, I need a 300 spine. If you're right in between spines, let's say you are between a 350 and a 300, always go stiffer. Stiffer is a lower number, so 300 is stiffer than 350. So already, you can see I'm in the optimum spine range. That's great, but I know that there's some things I'm changing this year. So I know I'm shooting a 110 grain outsert system. Uh, that's what I want to shoot. I'm not willing to play around with that. Remember that your point weight here, it is the sum 
of your broadhead or field point and your insert or outsert. It's the sum. So I'm shooting a 110 gram insert um, this year. This does not include my broadhead weight now, but you can see how lowering the point weight <clears throat> made the, the arrow too stiff now for my bow. So that's how this works essentially. Shaft length. If you shorten your shaft length, if you cut length off of your arrow, that will stiffen it. Let's put this down to 28 and you can see that stiffens it. Let's put it up to 30 and you can see that weakens it, right? So before we were at 29.5. Now with shaft length, I put my arrow on, or I put my bow on my drawboard, crank it all the way back. I take a tape measure and I measure from my knocking point to my arrow rest. That tells me the minimum length my arrow must be to shoot off my bow without falling off my rest at full draw. I know it's 28 inches on mine. So add a, you know, a half inch of length to that to be safe. You do not want to shoot an arrow that's too short. That's incredibly dangerous and it would really suck if you built your arrows and then realize that um, you can't even shoot them because they're too short for your bow. So I'm willing to play around with shaft length to a certain extent. I'm not going to go below probably 28 and a half inches and I don't want it sticking way out in front either. I'm probably not going to go past 30 inches. Point weight, I'm totally willing to move around with. I know I'm shooting 110 grain insert, so that's non-negotiable, but I can shoot any grain of broadhead I want. So let's say I shoot a 100 grain broadhead with that 110 grain insert, that's 210 grains up front. Already I'm in that optimum spine range. Um, I like that speed, as you guys know, I think the golden rule of arrow building is to shoot the heaviest arrow you can um, while maintaining that uh, 270 to 280 feet per step feet per second speed range. That's just where arrows fly best, especially with fixed blade broadheads. Um, and at 63 pounds, again, I'm willing to change this. I have a 60 to 70 pound bow. I'll shoot any range in there if it means that my spine is optimal. Now, I could shoot this. I could build this arrow just like this and it would, uh, it would fly really well for me. Now, I want to shoot a little bit heavier. If that 487 is not quite enough for me. I like to be 500 plus. Last year I shot uh, 575, so this would be quite a bit lighter. So let's say I shoot 150 grain broadhead, which is what I think I'll do this year. So we're going to add 50 grains to that point weight. We're still in that optimum spine. Now it's a little bit slow. I'd like to have a bit more speed, so we can increase that speed by increasing the draw weight. Let's go 67. There we go. We're back in that range I like for speed, we're back in the weight I like, but now it's slightly weak, so we gotta stiffen that arrow. How can we stiffen that? Um, you can stiffen it, easiest way is to cut off shaft length. So let's go down to 28.5. That's really nice right there. Now I prefer this to be dead center or on the slightly stiff end of the spectrum. Um, <clears throat> the reason for that is because arrows naturally weaken over time. If you've ever seen, um, some arrows will have a warning on their label saying warning flex it first. Um, the reason for that is because arrows will weaken after an initial shoot in period and flexing them helps get past that. So um, if, you, if you're on the initial, or if you're on the slightly stiff end, that's perfectly fine. That's actually what I prefer. You actually can shoot the spine out of arrows too. If, if you shoot a ton, you might notice that one day you just have one arrow that's a complete flyaway. You've probably shot the spine out of the arrow. Arrows do wear out. Um, anyways, back to this. Now, I like this speed. I like this weight. I want to get this spine a little bit stiffer. I mean, if I went down to 28 inches, that brings me exactly to where I want to be, but that's just too short for my bow. I'm not willing to change my draw length, so we're going to stick with that 28.5. Um, <clears throat> we could stiffen this by, you know, if I take off 25 grains to shoot, if I shot 125 grain broadhead, that brings me right in that range again. That's a little fast, but I, I mean, not much. I really like that speed. The arrow is a little light. I kind of like that, the idea of shooting 150. <clears throat> I like that little bit of extra weight. So the only other thing I can really change at this point is my peak weight. If I bring this down to 65, well that puts me right there on the stiff side of optimum. So to me this looks really good. I'm, I'm in the speed I like, maybe a little slow. Um, so you know we can, <clears throat> let's go 66 pounds. I mean it only increased two or three feet per second but you know, anywhere in that range is going to work really well. So 
I think this is good. This is what I'm going to go with, I believe. Um, but the idea here is that you can play around with this for hours. You can pick any arrow manufacturer. You play around with point weights, broadhead weights, shaft lengths, everything um, <clears throat> to build a perfect arrow. I've used this for years. Every time I build an arrow using this and I, I find that optimum spine before I build it, my arrows are perfect. And I shoot long range. I shoot fixed blade broadheads. I have no issues with that. Um, this is why I can shoot fixed blade broadheads with my field points out to 80 yards. All right, guys. So that is spine matching using Archer's Advantage in a nutshell. This is just one application that this uh, this tool is useful for. This is its main job, but of course you can you can print off sight tapes. You can look at your arrow's trajectory. This program is so powerful. It gives you all the math and physics behind your bow and your arrow. It's it's an amazing tool. So. Thanks for following along so far. That is how I got to what my arrow build is going to be this year. And I know that when I build it, it's going to be perfect. There's no way it can't be. This program has never failed me. So that's how we got to the point where we're at now, which is, okay, we know what we're going to build. Now it's time to start putting it all together. So that's what part two of this video series is going to be. It's going to, going to be a complete arrow building guide. I'm going to start with just bare shafts and we're going to go from the ground up and build a dozen arrows together. So if you're into that, link in the description below for the next video in the series.